G'day everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Australian Property Investment Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Christie David, and I run a mortgage broking business called Atelier Wealth. That's not why we're here. We are all about trying to help property investors scale up their portfolios, build massive amounts of intergenerational wealth through investing in quality assets. And that journey for a lot of Australians typically starts with owning their own home. But as we know, one of the biggest challenges young or any aspiring first home buyer has is trying to save for a deposit while maybe paying rent, for example, or the goalposts just keep moving with property prices increasing year on year. And there's nothing more, I, from my perspective, there's nothing worse than seeing aspirational first home buyers lose steam with their ambitions. And uh, and sometimes the bank of mum and dad is there to help, sometimes not. So today's episode is geared towards trying to unlock this problem that first home buyers have which is saving for a deposit, which is where James Bow comes into the picture with Own Home. Now, if you're familiar with Own Home's journey, here's a great story of a business that has been picked up and owned now a part ownership from one of the show's biggest banks. And we're privileged to have James on joining us. G'day, mate. How are you doing? Doing well and uh, really glad to be here. Thanks for having awesome, me. Mate. Thanks very much for being uh, for making the effort to come into the studio. Uh, mate, what I'd love to do is before we kind of jump into Own, own Home and the success that you had, is a little bit about yourself. So what I call the three P's, about yourself personally, professionally, and maybe your property journey to date as well. Yeah. Uh, so I'm James Bow, co-founder, co-CEO of Own Home. Personally, uh, I grew up on the central coast uh, in New South Wales, just north of Sydney. Uh, went to school in Sydney, went to university in Sydney, and so um, have spent you know most of my adult life here with the exception of, um, I guess, six years in, in San Francisco. Beautiful. Um, and a year and a bit in London. My wife's from the UK. So it was really nice to spend that time close to her family. Yeah. Um, and made our way back to Australia just over two years ago to found own home. Wow. Uh, so that's a little bit about, um, me personally, the places that I've lived. Yeah. Um, how was your San Fran experience? I mean, six years, obviously you've done something right to last six years over there. Yeah. It's a really interesting and fascinating place. And it's, it's interesting you say done something right to, to last that long there. Uh, it's a city with um, its own pretty immense challenges when it comes to housing affordability, Absolutely. housing access on a totally different sort of scale and dimension to the challenges that we face here in Australia, specifically with regards to homelessness in San Francisco. Yeah. Um, and it was always um, a wake up call when we'd host friends from Australia and uh, they would refresh us with the observations of coming into the city and just seeing how yeah. chronic that that struggle that that city has with the challenge of homelessness yeah. there. Uh, but I, I, it was really fascinating to be there and I spent uh, six years working with uh, growth and venture uh, investors, helping them think through yeah. um, different opportunities in the US. And so that was a wonderful front row seat to... Uh, a lot of the innovation that comes out of Silicon Valley. And I was fortunate to spend uh, a lot of time looking at uh, fintech and yeah. also looking at um, different models that were focused on solving the challenge of housing access in the US. And so that was certainly part of the light bulb moment um, for sending me on the journey to, awesome. to building own home. Very good. And then, yeah, I guess your your journey, what what, what triggered this? Because I guess that's going to be a big, big question that comes up. Was this born out of personal frustration? Was this an idea you saw in the market? Was this an idea you sat on, for example? How did this you know, go from an idea to now probably incubation yeah. to now real life? Yeah, a confluence of factors. Uh, one was um, being fortunate enough to see uh, different models overseas. Mm. And uh, the US has a really robust set of different solutions focused on the deposit hurdle. Right. Uh, rent to own being one of those, yes. but a whole bunch of different deposit funding solutions. Uh, in the UK, there's a really robust rent to own program. There's yeah. a lot of different solutions focused on helping families overcome the deposit hurdle. Okay. And so that was one vector, so to speak. Yeah. The other, of course, was the lived experience myself. Yeah. Um, I had a very idyllic uh, childhood and upbringing, but one of five. And so there's certainly no bank of mum and dad coming to the rescue, so to speak, on funding that deposit. Yeah. And for my co-founder and I, as we thought through the biggest challenges that we face in our lives, um, certainly front and center was 
the aspiration for financial security. Mm. And at the core of that aspiration was uh, ownership of a family home. And um, we, you know, lived and breathed that challenge for ourselves. Um, Tim, my co-founder, is an own home customer. So yeah. Certainly, you know, part of it was working backwards from what's the solution Great. that's going to work for us, um, but also a solution that we knew would be exciting for friends, families, others that were in the same boat as us. And that boat is really um, folks that are doing everything right, have great credit histories, um, are earning more than enough to service a mortgage, yeah. but are struggling to um, save that couple of hundred grand that you need for a deposit in most capital cities in yeah. Australia. Yeah, awesome. And taking this idea and going to market, I mean, I often say that product innovation in finance is I won't say challenging because it's obviously like you guys are you know, coming to the fore, for example, um, but it's so tied up with compliance and regulation that it maybe stifles that little bit of innovation. And having worked inside a bank as well, inside CBA, um, the layers internally means good ideas can sometimes end up dead. And so how do you take your idea and, and persist and push through that this one has commercial value as well, but also compliance uh, perspective as well? Yeah, I think it's a, a double-edged sword in Australia. I mean, we have a really robust uh, regulatory framework when it comes to consumer credit. Yeah. And I think a lot of, uh, you know, Australians broadly benefit from that regulatory Absolutely. framework. Yeah. Um, but you're right. It is a really um, difficult challenge to innovate with regards to fintech uh, in, in Australia as a result. And we've been really focused, therefore, on making sure that we're uh, building the right coalition uh, of partners who can help us on our mission to expand access to mm -hmm. home ownership, uh, whether that's a coalition of folks that work within Own Home, whether that's our funding partners, including the Commonwealth Bank, uh, but also making sure that we're building really fruitful uh, engagement with Australia's regulators uh, mm -hmm. as we navigate uh innovation more broadly with regards to this uh, incredibly well-recognized challenge of awesome. housing access. Awesome. Very good. So before we kick on, I just want to reiterate that this is going to be a uh, discussion that's generally in nature and not intended to give advice. So if you do need advice, please do seek out a professional. Uh, so let's go through, I guess we've kind of jumped ahead a little bit, but yeah. uh, for those, the uninitiated, for example, uh, what is own home and take us through the, the nuts and bolts of how it works. Yeah. So quite simply, uh, most uh, homeowners will need a mortgage to uh, buy yeah. their home. And in order to access a mortgage, you're going to need funds for a deposit. Yeah. And we recognise, governments recognise, I think most Australians recognise that the upfront cost is typically the number one challenge yeah. for families in accessing the security of home ownership. And so the role that we play and the way that we deliver on our mission of expanding access to home ownership is fundamentally quite simple. We fund families' deposits in order for them to be able to access an 80% mortgage yeah. without paying lenders' mortgage insurance. Sure thing. And as a result, they've got a mortgage and they also have a second mortgage with Own Home that's yeah. funding their deposit and they're paying that off over time. Yeah. Yeah, so it's very much a, a direct competitor, say getting a guarantor loan right, which would be you reference banker, mum and dad. So I, I, can only, I can speak from personal experience or uh, having dealt with a number of clients, for example, uh, there is, there's a parent, it's family and money is one dynamic and then there's a parent's interpretation of what a guarantor loan is. There's the bank's version and then there's the children's interpretation. So there are things that get lost in translation, especially around risk, uh, around, you know, how does the second mortgage work on a parent's property, for example, when they've got a loan, uh, and then I guess, you know, who the kids qualify with and how that works from a rate perspective as well. So that's kind of par for course when you look at a guarantor loan. So been around for a while, kind of tried and tested. Then you've got the second option, which is parents don't necessarily want to put up their house as collateral. So they'll give a, call it a gift. They inadvertently think it's a gift or, or the kids uh, see it that way as well. Or maybe it's a loan that they need to be repaid back at some point, but it's a honeymoon deal. Uh, and then you've got, I don't have access to bank and mum and dad or they're not going to be able to get, uh, or they're not going to be able to put up a property as security. So then we're going to pay mortgage insurance. But you guys kind of come in and go, hang on, 
put our hand up. We're a fourth option here. We're very viable. You've got the borrowing capacity to service the nearly the whole purchase price, but we see you because you're still renting. For example, it's hard to get ahead while you're still renting and save for that deposit. But instead of renting, you could actually pay off you know, uh, your home loan as well, which is again a frustration that we had because people go, "I've got the borrowing capacity. I'm able to save a little bit plus pay my rent." And I can service this loan, but the bank doesn't seem really to play ball. And that's again, I talk about where you guys come in. So yeah, I think those are the right analogs. I mean, one other would be the first home buyer guarantee. Yes, by the federal government. Right. Yeah, uh, there's also the single parent guarantee program. Yeah, and those are really focused on how do we massively reduce the amount of upfront funds that people need mm. and enable them to access home financing for more of their property. So that's 95% and 98% home financing respectively yep. without the need for lender's mortgage insurance. Mm. And that just so happens to be an enabling factor for a single mortgage. Yep. And the role that we play is that we fund that incremental portion from 80 up to 100% yep. via a second mortgage. Yep. But it's not dissimilar in that way to the government's own programs that are really focused on how do we move the needle on expanding access to home ownership yeah. for those that don't have access to or uh, maybe don't want to rely on uh, the bank of mum and dad. Mm. Um, and even in those guarantors, you know, situations where uh, there's not necessarily a cash outlay from uh, parents, yeah. it certainly can come with some implications as they think about retirement and Correct. what's the flexibility Correct. that so they, they want have. to move and they've got this, yeah, the, the, uh, another loan that's attached to the property as well. Yeah. You, you touched on the first time in a grant, so that's probably why I left it out earlier because it's either income restrictive or it's purchase price restrictive. And the, the, generally a lot of the first home buyers that we come across aren't buying sub $800,000 properties, especially if you're buying Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, uh, Brisbane to a certain degree. And they go, well, what quality asset can I buy now that I'm buying purely on price and not location or lifestyle, for example, and then I've got to be able to, you know, fit within these couple of boxes, for example, live in it for 12 months and I don't want to because I'm going to outgrow it, for example, or it's not my ideal location. Uh, and I feel like this is this is such a good alternative. Um, how do you get the message out? Because you're probably like, I don't know, when you hear a lot of the media and, and a lot of first-home buyers going, we're priced out or it's struggling to save for a deposit and you're here going, hey, we've got, we've got such an option for you. Do, do, do you just feel this kind of stirrup inside you going, we're here to help, we're here to help, and how do you get in front of more people? It's a really good observation. I mean, the, the it's cliched, but every uh, new business is on a race to distribution mm. and incumbents that are on a race to innovation, and we're certainly on our race to distribution. Yeah. And so I really appreciate the opportunity, you know, even now, Aaron, to talk with you oh, and and spread the word, the good word, so to speak. Of, I think of you owner. just make I, – I think it's personal. I think you make our lives easier, <laughs> really. Like uh, for me, I'm like I'm talking to the team. I'm like, this is a no-brainer. Like we've got so many first-time buyers whose issue is a deposit and here's a very viable alternative to lenders' mortgage insurance. Yeah, and you, yeah, so you, you mentioned the first-time buyer guarantee and you're exactly right. It's a bit of a Goldilocks solution where you need to earn under a certain threshold, mm. $200,000 as a couple or family, yep. and you can only purchase homes up to 950 k in Sydney. And I mean, we were just supporting a family at an auction on the weekend in Schofields. The property went for $1.6 million. It was 50 kilometers out from yeah. Sydney. And so it's, and the median home price in Sydney is close to $1.5 million. Yes. And so that means 50% of all homes that are selling in Sydney are selling for more than $1.5 million. Yep. And the cutoff to access that first home buyer guarantee is $950,000. Yes. So it doesn't go very far if you're solving for the needs of a family. Um, and what we know to be true in Australia is that the deposit hurdle challenge cuts right across the income and credit quality mm. spectrum. You know, in the US, you've got what they refer to as sort of second tier cities where median home prices might be sort of three hundred and fifty to $400,000. Yes. And so deposits are therefore meaningfully lower. Yeah. Uh, it's very difficult to find property at that price point Absolutely. in any capital city um, uh, around you'd the country. you struggle to find something. Yeah. And then you struggle to find something that is actually a quality asset in that case as well. So there's, there's buying property and then there's buying quality as well, right? So, that's right. Yeah. That's right. I was going to say, we, you know, on that point, one of the propositions that we haven't, you know, talked about 
that we're really excited by is own homes, buyer's agent proposition for families. And so the um, upfront cost of own home is 1% to 2% of the home value. Yeah. And so that's much lower than lender's mortgage insurance. And what families get in return is the full support of a licensed buyer's agent to help them navigate that home purchase journey. Wow. It also covers conveyancing uh, and building and pest or strata reports, depending on the property profile. Yeah. And we see that as uh, an incredibly valuable proposition for the owner occupiers that we're there to support. And more often than not, first home buyers, not exclusively first home buyers, mm. uh, but that's a cohort who are necessarily going through that for the first time in their lives, yeah. but they're pitted against uh, agents who understandably see it as their role to agitate against their interests. And so we're really excited to help uh, level the playing field, so to speak, from a sort of commercial negotiation point of view yeah. and the advocacy of our customers uh, we're really excited to see really flows from that uh, intimate experience that they have with our buyers agents to support them on that exactly. home purchase journey. Because I think you've you've kind of nailed it from a customer journey perspective because you can unlock the uh, finance side of it, which is, hey, look, here's how much you can borrow, here's how much you can buy for, on your merry way, good luck in the market. And you just see them in like, they're swinging to see a sharks at the moment when it comes to try and buy. The, you know, the, the listed house price guide is here. The auction blows them away, for example, or the actual sale price is just well above. And so they're constantly just second guessing themselves when they're pounding the pavement going, how much is it going to sell for? That that nervousness then leads into frustration, leads into anger, a bit of despondence comes into it. You see the emotional roller coaster for first home buyers. I've seen it personally in our team. Like I've experienced it for myself as well. And all you see is at some point they're just going to pay the what I call the frustrated buyers and it's the one that just everyone's had, how did that purchase price come about? And someone's just gone well and truly over to make the pain disappear. Yeah. So if I you're mean, talking buyer's agent, yeah. Yeah, we're, yeah. And, I mean, we're seeing it in the, the data for the families that we're supporting where the typical journey for a first home buyer is around nine months. Yeah, from, absolutely. Uh, the know, gestation beginning. period for the first The gestation home period, so to speak, <laughs> yeah. Uh, not dissimilar to, to, to humans. <laughs> is uh, in contrast our average exchange period from pr- approval with own home to property purchase is just over six weeks. Wow. And so those are families that are really beginning their journey yep. with own home because we happen to be serving folks who are definitionally uh, earlier in that home purchase yeah. journey because they were unable to access other options right. like the first home buyer guarantee or let's just take this yeah. and we'll work through this so you're saying look we can take a buyer from where they are to maybe buying six, call it six to eight weeks in two months um, but if they're doing it themselves they're at nine months now two things have happened the market's completely moved as well over that extra seven seven month period but if you're in your own home by month two one now you're paying off a mortgage instead of paying rent and then if you it, the price increase you've saved as well by buying today instead of in seven months' time as well. And the property asset that you could have bought versus, you know, seven months later, you might be priced out of the suburb that you're looking in. So you think about like the compound effect of taking action today or in two months' time. And it's like if you're worried over, that's what I say to people, if you're, if you're looking at the interest rate, you've missed a point. And if you're dwelling on the, even before, I mean, I found out about you guys, the mortgage insurance, I mean, 2%, thereabouts, 2 to 3% on mortgage insurance. We're compounding at six to seven percent, so you've already made that back by the time you know a few months later. So for you guys, it's yeah. And the third a, yeah. dimension I'd say is that advocacy work from the buyer's agent. So just yeah. two weeks ago, we supported a family in Bentley, Victoria, uh, purchased a home for seven thirty five that was guiding seven fifty to seven eighty five. Yeah, and that's effectively just paid for the buyer's agent fee straight mm-hmm. off the bat, buying that well below guide, and it's being able to bring some of that commercial dispassion and 101 negotiation to bear on behalf of mm. our clients uh, that we're super excited to continue to scale up and deliver. Excellent. Right, well done. Um, i seen you guys you know, heavily in the media as well. Uh, CBA obviously has taken notice of you guys. How does that, how does that, how do you, or how do you guys get on CBA's radar, for example? How's that relationship start to come about? And what, what have you enjoyed working with one of Australia's biggest banks? Because that's got to be a, uh, a bit of validation, a bit of pat on the back that you guys are certainly you know, heading in the right direction, right? Yeah, so I think they're Australia's most trusted financial 
uh, brand. Mm. Uh, I know a lot of people have had a variety of experiences oh, look, with every good, bank. Good, bad, ugly, but I mean, they deliver. They deliver. Yeah, they deliver. Yeah, yeah. And they're also Australia's largest supporter of first home buyers. Yes. And we are incredibly excited that they share our vision mm. for a world in which home ownership in Australia is not hereditary and access to home ownership is not decided on by, by virtue of who your parents are, mm -hmm. but rather whether or not you're able to afford a mortgage. And the fundamentals of responsible lending in Australia really come back to serviceability assessments. Yes. Um, different countries have a whole bunch of different approaches. Like in the US, there's myriad approaches that have less regard to serviceability and more regard to different assets that you might have. But in mm -hmm. Australia, it's squarely focused on can you afford the commitments of a mortgage? Mm -hmm. And we know to be true to be true that there are hundreds of thousands of families around the country who are more than capable of the monthly commitments of a mortgage but just don't have those upfront funds. Yeah. And so we're incredibly excited to have the backing of CBA as a, as a part owner of the business. Uh, that said, we're also in no way exclusively tied to the Commonwealth Bank in, in any way whatsoever. And we're really focused on making sure that we continue to build out a coalition of banking partners right. that are excited and eager to make a dent on housing access in Australia. Yeah, nice. So how have you guys, um, I mean, it's the nicest possible way. How have you guys owned this space and not had someone else come in? Because, I mean, it's, I'd say other banks are kind of lending, right? They can easily move into this territory. Why haven't they? And why are you guys owning this space? Sometimes I think the some of the greatest innovations were lying in plain sight. Yeah. And this challenge of the deposit hurdle has been well known, well documented for yeah. a long time. Of course, it's become particularly acute for our generation yeah. um, and particularly acute over the last 20 years. I think that one of the challenges is that you do need an immense amount of capital to make a dent on this mm. challenge. And so we've been incredibly focused to date on making sure that we partner with incredibly well capitalized institutions uh, that can help us deliver the impact that we know that we can. Yeah. And that's that's no no easy feat and certainly one of the the, the barriers, so to speak. That said, I fully expect that there will be a lot of smart people that uh, develop solutions that are focused on this challenge. And mm. we really welcome that because unfortunately it doesn't look like it's going anywhere anytime soon. Yeah. And so I mean, you, you, uh, we pull up headlines from the fifties and sixties that talk about it's, you know, too expensive to, to buy a property or saving for a deposit is hard. So this is not a new phenomenon. Thanks to COVID. This has been around for a long time. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And so where to hear from next? Like how do you, how do you, how do you, you mentioned about distribution, for example. How do you really push the distribution envelope at the moment? Well, we know today that 70% of mortgages are sold by brokers, yeah. they're navigated by brokers. Yeah. And our or my number one focus is making sure that we as a business are the best possible partner for brokers. Yeah, okay. We believe that there's no one better placed than brokers to help families navigate the set of options that they have and everyone does have options whether that's continuing to rent and save and evaluating what that pathway looks like yeah whether that's contemplating the sort of different suite of family support options that yeah. people can explore and, and contemplate whether that's high lvr lmi supported loans mm -hmm. um, or whether that's own home and so we're really excited to continue to educate um, and partner with with brokers um, to help them help their clients Beautiful. on the financing journey. Oh, well done. Well done. What's some of the questions that you get, like frequently asked questions? Because I know when I went through it, I had a few questions when we jumped on, on a call a while ago. So what are you hearing? So someone's listening, for example, and you look, I can read your mind in terms of some of the questions you've got um, floating through their head. What are some of the common thoughts, objections that you guys get? Yeah. So one of the common questions it would be, what's your ideal sort of customer profile mm. to be suitable for own home. Yeah. Uh, we're best placed to support those who are unable to access programs like the first home buyer guarantee. Yeah. 
because their incomes are too high yeah, uh, and they therefore have fantastic serviceability mm. but don't have the full uh, deposit saved. Yes. Yeah. They still have a sizable amount of savings. Like stamp duty in Australia is a really hefty outlay up front. So these are families who still have tens of thousands of dollars uh, saved at a minimum for stamp duty and the upfront cost yeah. of own home. Yeah. So it's not a, a zero savings solution. Yeah. Uh, so you have great income, you've got a sizable amount of savings and you've got that track record of saving fastidiously. Yeah. But you just happen to be typically earlier in that savings journey. Okay. And you're looking to, I guess, accelerate your path to home ownership and avoid, yeah. as you said, that feeling, and it's more than a feeling, it's been the reality for a long time, that reality of the goalposts sort of getting further out of reach yeah. as deposit hurdles race ahead faster than uh, savings. Correct. Um, one of the other questions that we get, uh, what are the areas that we can support and serve? Today we're able to support families in effectively every capital city in Australia with the exception of uh, Darwin and Hobart today. Yeah, okay. And we're also able to support families in, I guess, what I'd call like regional centres like Newcastle, Wollongong, mm. Sunshine Coast, Gold Coast. Yeah. Think of our, our sort of current coverage as sort of greater, you know, Sydney, greater capital Beautiful. regions. Excellent. Uh, are there any properties that you won't that you won't take a second mortgage on or you won't lend on? We, I mean, the, the maximum property purchase that we're able to support yeah, are properties up to two and a half million. Okay. The, I mean, if they're buying that, they're, yeah. It's, uh, they're it's a, a typically a, a quality property. Yeah. Uh, but we are focused on helping the families that, that we support. No one knows what the future looks like, but buy properties that have historically had solid capital growth mm. outlook and prospects. Okay. And so that means that we're not able to support studios in high density developments that yeah. have historically had very low capital growth prospects and profiles. Of course, you know, there's a whole bunch of evidence to support that that will be, will represent an increasing share of the way that people live in the future and, yeah. and may well. That could have, change. The pendulum may swing that way. Yeah. yeah. But uh, think of us as disproportionately focused on uh, homes that are capable of, you know, Supporting a, a family, whether that's even you know a couple, like a one to two bedroom apartment, yeah, um, or, or freestanding home or townhouse. Okay, cool. uh, any in the building or land house and land space as well. Great question. So it does need to be a completed property. Okay, we are able to support newly completed purchases. Yeah. So let's say they've committed to an, like I won't say the house and land package, and then they haven't saved up enough over time, and they're getting to that stage that's ready for handover at a point. Is that something that you guys are like? That'll be a difficult yeah. profile of property for us to support uh, because more often than not in that case, we've Second played show. less of a role in helping them determine the value of that property okay. or negotiate the purchase price of yeah. that property. Uh, but that said, um, it is like watch this space yeah. and we know that that is a property profile that, is particularly important for first-time buyers. Mm. Yeah, nice, awesome. Uh, and where to hear from next personally for yourself? Uh, what what goals do you want to keep personally, mate? Well, here, I, I mean, started own home because I'm incredibly excited about our mission of expanding access to home ownership. Yeah, and um, I know that we're at the bottom of the proverbial mountain on delivering that impact, and so I'm incredibly excited to continue kicking goals with the small but mighty team that we have yeah. at, at own home. And it's uh, not the uh, size of the army. It's the heart in the army. Right. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Um, you can use it mate with the team. <laughs> exa exactly right. So um, yeah, incredibly excited to, to keep, you know, kicking goals and, and really scaling um, our impact on families around, around the country. Awesome. mate. And I, I love the word impact. And I had a chat with one of our team members the other day. I think you unlocked like a, a way for them to buy like a, 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 you know, a couple more investment properties uh, as an example. And I said, Nate, just think about the impact that you're going to have on this family's wealth creation. You know, they've, they've seen other broker couldn't really do much. We've unlocked a pathway for them as well. I'm like, that's creating 
a whole different opportunity for them to build that, to build true wealth. Same for what you guys are doing. You're going to take people that would have or could have resigned themselves to becoming generation renters. And it's like, hey, that home ownership is within your grasp now. You just had to know about it. There had to be that awareness, for example. So it often rewards people that take some action or want to find the right answers as well because the, op- the product is there. But what you're going to do is the people that may have been think that they were confined to renting have an opportunity to own their own home. That can change everything for a family security. And so there's, there's no better place to start with uh, investing than to start with owning your own home because I know what that does from a security and a, you know, from a from a mental perspective when you're not having to pay a landlord as well, right? So it's a real kudos to what you guys are building. You should be very, very proud. No, I appreciate that. And it, yeah, as you said, no, no better place to start. But I also know that a lot of families rent vest because it's incredibly difficult yes. to start out of the gate with a home that's close enough to where you want to work yep. um, and put down roots in the community or Correct. school catchment area. Yep. Um, and so we recognize that more broadly, I'd say home ownership has mm. been such an incredible wealth creation engine for Australians and such a great source of financial security. Mm. The stats are incredibly stark. It's that homeowners at retirement have yeah. wealth that is sort of, I think it's like 13 to 20 times greater yes. than that of renters. And we, to, to your point, like generation rent, I think that's a real concern for my generation. Yeah. That that's the, the prospect that, that's ahead of us. Okay. And uh, we're excited to um, try, and, try and tip the scales. Absolutely, mate. Well done. I'm really excited to see how you guys go and grow as well. So, uh, anything I can do in terms of our broker industry to, to help you guys, mate, would love to. Uh, but I think in terms of clients, you know, getting getting this in front of as many people as possible is going to be the mission. So I wish you all the very best. Thanks, Aaron. And uh, we'll watch to see how you guys uh, kick on, mate. Excited. Thank you. Beautiful. If you found that helpful, particularly, I know we, we talk to a lot of investors, but uh, you know people in your sphere, you know people in your network who are, you know, first-home buyers that had that, um, that, had that desire but have that also that inner frustration where they can't just save for that deposit. So if you know of someone, get them to reach out to own home or reach out to us and we'll put them in touch as well and talk through what their options look like. Because uh, like I say, investing and building a good quality portfolio often starts with having that security for your own home as well. And this is a certainly a great product to help people on their, on their journey and mission. So if you found that helpful, you know, we'd love a review. But also if you have any other questions around own home, feel free to reach out to myself and our team as well. That's another that's a wrap for another episode of the Australian Property Investment Podcast. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks.